Welcome to Kellis Coder and today we will be building a Velamon USB experiment interface board kit. Motherfucker! So for people outside of the Benelux, Velamon may not be a recognizable brand. Koen Velamon, a Belgian entrepreneur, created Velamon kits back in 1974 and they created electronics kits and later they also did soldering irons, etc. Everything that has to do with electronics. And they've really become massive, these kits, in the 80s and the 90s. I used to solder one or two every year back in the early 90s. And I had great fun and you also learned a lot from it. Now this one has a difficulty of five, which I don't agree with. It's all through a hole, but yeah, whatever. And it has seven input channels, of which two analog and 10 output channels. So uh, let's put it together and write a little program using Linux and libusb. This comes with a DLL for Windows XP. <laughs> but we don't do Windows on this channel. We don't do Microsoft Windows on this channel. We banish them for good. They don't exist. Microsoft doesn't exist. It's not the OS you're looking for. So before we start to solder, let's have a look at the schematic so that we have a basic understanding of what we're building. And especially when you're new to electronics, always have a look at the schematic, you will always learn something. So here we see that the heart of the system is the PIC 16C745 microcontroller. We see that we have the USB coming in there, so that is decoded by this PIC. We see that we have some amplification attenuation circuits, uh, I think it's 10 times, yeah, that go into the RA0, RA1, so that's the analog inputs, and we can set the attenuation, oh that's cool, that's really nice. Then we have the digital inputs, the 5, I1 to I5, they go through a buffer, it's always good to buffer things when they go into a microcontroller or digital gate. And we can also push these buttons ourselves, they are pulled up. So we can actually pull up these, um, so basically have input from these buttons. That's kind of a cool feature. Then we have some more amplification for uh, the pulse wave modulation here. And we have some Buffering for the, oh, we also have a digital to analog converter. Cool, we can create analog out, nice. And then we have the digital inputs, RB0 to RB7, also buffered here, very nicely designed and driven with some LEDs. Very much similar to the idea that I had implemented with my 32-bit IO. Look at that video. So now that we know basically what is going on, let's uh, start building it. So I have the part list printed out, so I know which resistors go where. And let's open up this box and see what is in the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh my goodness. Seriously? Uh. Oh, there we go. Yes, you can print out the manual. I already did that. I got it here. So we have the header blocks. We have the components and seriously, a single sided PCB. That is kind of weird. Oh my goodness, there's so many resistors. Ugh. Why is that? Oh, they even include a piece of wire for the wire bridge. <laughs> That's funny. If you have been doing electronics as long as I have, you, you really start to recognize the colors except when they're one percent then i still have to look up the chart but with the standard 10 percent deviation it just clicks it's like you see it instantly you know that these are one case one case that are in series with the led as a current limiting resistor so i assumed r5 is also a 1k but here it says r5 is 10k this makes no sense. These go to the LEDs. And 1K, yes, current limiting resistor is a bit high, but yeah, it will work. But then why would R5 suddenly be 10K? That doesn't make any sense. It should be 1K. And it goes straight to these LEDs. So
So I wonder if there is a new version out of this documentation. So here we see it on the board, P8055-1, and I have a P8055-2. And these are not 1K resistors, these are 470 ohm, which makes more sense for an LED in my opinion. And there are definitely a lot less resistors. So why doesn't this exist? And this looks the same, but it has a different... Yeah, look at that. There we go. Downloads. Part list. This is the N2. There we go. And we zoom in. Yes, we still have the amplification, attenuation, still the pick. And 680 ohms for the LEDs. That's a more logical thing. Yes. Well, that's a good tip, but also do not blindly follow the things that you have downloaded because there are apparently more 8055s. We have a version 1 and a version 2, which actually is called WS something on their website. And this is why you need to have experience in these things. And that's why it's probably a five star difficulty. <laughs> So as you can see, I've been a bit anal. I have all the gold stripes pointing to the top and here pointing to the right. Doesn't matter. It's just a little neurotic thing that I do. When you snap these leads, you will actually send a shockwave through the solder joint. And there is some air that gets in between and it will work the solder joint and will eventually break. So if you want your solder joints to last forever, reflow and make sure that also the tip of the exposed wire is covered with solder that will last you a lifetime another way to have good solder joints without having to resolder is to actually cut them nice and short and then immediately solder them that will save you a step and there's something cathartic about making electronics projects soldering them. It's like Bob Ross, a happy little capacitor here. Happy little capacitors. All together on the board. Right next to your friend, yes. There's something cathartic about soldering. little friends let's split your legs ah baby I split your legs apart <laughs> now this is a little trick that I use yes this is the expensive flux stuff but it will make drag soldering so much easier put it down because I'm not going to solder all these pins individually only morons do that my time is too precious for that. Just wag it in. So we have all this nice little, all this nice flux there. Usually I just put my solder there and just go like. Mm. It's hard to do that in the camp for the camera. So you can see I can solder this in one drag. only do that when you have enough flux on there otherwise it won't work and then there's one that doesn't really go there we go so that is soldering it makes soldering these pins so much quicker just drag it with a lot of flux there we go And then you 
can always touch up the individual pins. There, there, there. Let's see if we can also do that with this cheap flux. Or a flux pen. Not as fluently, but it still goes rather quickly. There you go. And a little bridge, but bridges are never a problem with soldering. There you go, gone. So, yeah, even with this cheaper flux it's possible, but not as easy as you see as with the other flux. But there you go, it's still quicker than going individually. And if there is a bridge, just put your soldering iron on there and lift it up. So it's completely done now. We just have to give it a wipe down, especially with that expensive flux that I used to flood solder. Keep your eyes shut, you don't want the alcohol in your eyes. And I don't do safety goggles. So there we have it, completely nicely assembled. The terminators all point out so that you can stick the wires in. You got the chips in there, the feet on the back. I really like that feature that they give them. The board is still a bit sticky. I need to give it another wash. You can see it's a bit matte. There's some flux there from my drag soldering. But yeah, let's uh, hook it up to a computer and see what happens. Okay, to make sure that it actually worked, I did rely on uh, Windows because I know that this application works so I can actually test it and then we can start to work on Linux. So this looks well, the analog values, we need to tune those, those should be at 128, so it's a bit high now. That's why we have the potentiometers here. We can tweak those. Let's see if the, yeah. So uh, I soldered it correctly in one go. Now let's see how we can do this on Linux. So we ran it on uh, Windows successfully. Now I git cloned this and followed the steps. I'm not building the pilot GUI. I don't need that, so I only did the make all this. I don't do the sticky bit on there. I rather run with sudo, but I also did this, and now it actually works. So the obligatory 8-bit Knight Rider scanner, but also the analog out that translates this value to a voltage. So you see those pulsing in and out. And also we can stop it because these buttons are also scanned. There we go. Let's have a look at the code. So as you can see that code is relatively simple. Thanks to these two guys from probably Scandinavia, Sven Lindberg and Pieter Haljatson. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So I called an open device here, that is their library call. And I set my uh, address in there, which is zero, but you could iterate through zero to three. And if anyone is uh, greater or equal than to zero, then you have a valid device that you can talk to. I have a little delay coded in here. So I open the device, I set my digital output to one, and I loop here seven times to go through the LEDs from left to right, like the Knight Rider scanning up. So I write that value, the out, to that uh, USB device, and I do the same for the analog channels, that's what you saw, pulsing in and out. So here we pulse brighter and there we dim it down. And I read all the digital inputs. So if we press one of the five buttons, uh, it's no longer zero. So I close the USB device and exit out of a program. Actually, it's a clean exit, so we could use an exit zero. It makes a bit more sense. It's not an error like it is here. And here we go the other way. So we're moving the LEDs to the right and we're dimming the values 
And here again we read if one of the buttons is pressed. If so, then we close out. Very simple. Now I did not create a make file because, uh, well, I haven't gotten to it yet. But it's very simple. You just link to the K8055 library, to the libusb library and the mouse library. I don't know why they use mouse, but here I saw square root. I was like, okay, then I need to link to mouse. And there we go. I currently have to run it with sudo because um, I have not set up the Velamon rules in the Etsy UDEF, but I'm fine running it as a, a sudo for now. I'm going to do that. I'm curious whether that works, probably it will. And there we go. And if I press one of the buttons, you see we have an exit. So it's working. It's, it's a nice little system. Uh, very useful. And now we refactor the code because this was duplicated. So I took one of those code blocks, parameterized it with uh, up, which means scan up or scan down. And here we then set the D out value, depending if it's up, then we do a shift left and otherwise we do a shift right because that was the only difference. And then for the rest, basically the same. And here we call it, we scan up and then we scan down and we iterate that forever. So this is the clean code. Oh yes, and I introduced the standard bool for the boolean. I could have used an int as well, but you know, and the static is the magic sauce here. It keeps the state of the D out. So yeah, it works. So there you have it. We soldered up this nice Velman USB I.O. port. We wrote a little application on Linux, not Windows, because this to Windows. Courtesy of a wonderful little library that was written by two brilliant Scandinavian guys. And it all works nicely. The only problem that we had was when we started that there apparently are two revisions of this board. And I was looking at 1K for limited current resistor. On the LED, yeah, it's possible, but it's very, very weird. Usually that's around 470 ohms. And then the amount of resistors didn't match up. And I was like, there is something wrong here. And then we found the right set of instructions, build instructions, and it went off without a hitch. So yeah, I actually like this. Is it very usable? Uh, depends. If you need I.O. on a PC and you only have USB, then sure it is. If you have access to a Raspberry Pi, perhaps not so much. And it's not the fastest I.O. either. Uh, the pick runs on 4 MHz. So perhaps around 800 kilohertz at the most. I didn't do any actual tests. I'm not really that interested into it. But yeah, it's if you need I.O. on a laptop or on a system that just toggles things on and off, this is definitely a good affordable candidate. So I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.